Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another damn review show. Because fucketh you, you'll watch it. I am Lord Braun. I I'm Sir Sir Paul Danino Braun. I am Sir Doctor Saint Braun, Esquire. Titles. I I am the 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 Baron of the Christian Tenworth. Point is, I'm all I'm all high society. Look at my shit. I got this fucking white powdered wig. I, I got this fucking Fred Ascot thing. Scooby Doo. They solved mysteries. I'm. It's great. <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going with this one. Mindless babbling aside, today we're going to be talking about the favorite with an O U. Because it's British. You uncultured fuck. Dearest Queen, you are mad, giving me a palace. It is a monstrous extravagance, Mrs. Molly, we are at war. We won! Oh, it is not over, we must continue. Oh! Oh, I did not know that. The Queen is an extraordinary person. Oh, they were all staring, weren't they? I can tell even if I can't see, and I heard the word fat. Fat. And, and ugly. No one but me would dare, and I did not. So let's talk about the plot. Based on real events, The Favourite is a historical dramedy about the ailing Queen Anne, played here by Olivia Colman, and her relationship with her best friend and confidant, Sarah Churchill, played here by Rachel Weiss. And the internal power struggle that ensues when the new girl, Emma Stone's Abigail, is brought into the mix. All the while, Britain is at war with the French, a costly endeavour that could threaten the Queen's favour of her people. In many respects, the favorite is just Victorian Mean Girls, which could sound derogatory, but it's actually a compliment. There are no purely good or purely bad people in this movie. It's all shades of gray, and that is fascinating. It is just so much fun to watch. Abigail. <gasps> if you forget to load the pellet, the gun fires, makes a sound, but releases no shot. It is a great jape, do you agree? Yes. Maybe we will think of a use for it one day. Sometimes it is hard to remember whether you have loaded the pellet or not. I do fear confusion and accidents. I'm sure people will be careful. I'm going to do my very best to keep this review spoiler free because the marketing of this movie is fantastic and has kept some super juicy plot points under wraps. During the screening, I couldn't help but be reminded of a film I saw earlier this year, The Death of Stalin. You see, both films are very dark, comedic approaches to real historical events. Both films utilize quick, witty dialogue to drive the humor and absurdity, and both films are goddamn amazing. Yorgos Lanthimos is a director with a very particular sense of style. With this only being his third English language film, he has already shown himself to be a tremendous talent. Yorgos has been steadily improving with every movie he's made, which is quite a feat when you take in how good his early work is. The Lobster is just a magnificent journey into an absurdist dystopian future. I was a little concerned how he would fare with a more grounded subject matter. His last two films, The Lobster and The Killing of Sacred Deer, weren't exactly set in reality. These fears would ultimately be unfounded. Yorgos Lanthimos has handled the transition from the bizarre realities of curses and people changing into animals to the mundane routine of chamber pot cleaning and powdered wigs fantastically. The way this film conveys authenticity is just so peculiar. You would think that like an aristocratic kind of movie like this with all like the capes and the makeup and everything and the wigs like you think it would be very prim and proper like pride and prejudice type shit but it is not these people are crude as fuck there's duck racing tomato throwing and naked guys and the oh my god they say the word cunt so much so much they don't do that on downton abbey there's not an episode where he's like you're just a giant c word darling like it just doesn't happen we also definitely have to go over this cast. The cast of The Favourite is just stellar. Between their skills as actors and Lanthimos' directing, we get some absolutely amazing performances here. Seriously, I think this is the best damn thing Emma Stone's ever done. Rachel Weiss, as always, is great, and I just, she has this uncanny ability to waver between playing a good guy and a bad guy, and she's so deliciously evil in this movie. 
Oh, she's she's great. I love her. Nicholas Holt steals several scenes. He is just so giving 110% to this role. He's just the scummy, douchey guy, and he's awesome. Taylor Swift's boyfriend is pretty okay in this movie, too. He doesn't have that much to do, but he's fine in pretty much every scene he's in. And goddamn, Olivia Coleman is so good in this movie. She marries together this interesting sense of like sadness and power. It's fascinating. The dynamic is so interesting. I'm ready for the Russian ambassador. Who did your makeup? We went for something dramatic. Do you like it? You look like a badger. Oh. Are you going to cry? Really? Well, what do you think you look like? Badger. Do you really think you can meet the Russian delegation looking like that? No. I will manage it. Go back to your rooms. Thank you. Did you just look at me? Did you? Look at me! Look at me! How dare you! Close your eyes! Uh, you feel for her and you care about her and you feel bad, but you know that she's incredibly powerful and like people are afraid of her and respect her. It's so interesting to see somebody with so much power struggle so much. I would also be remiss if I didn't mention one of the biggest stars of the film, The Hatfield House. The majority of this film was shot on location at the Hatfield House in England. This country house has been used in countless productions. It has stood in as both Wayne and Croft Manor. The likes of Sherlock Holmes and Marilyn Monroe have walked its halls. The favorite makes the absolute best of this location. The cinematography is phenomenal. The way Robbie Ryan shoots and lights the Hatfield is perfection. He manages to build out this lived-in space. One thing I have seen people questioning slash complaining about is the intermittent use of fisheye lens. I honestly felt that its use could be explained simply as a question of practicality. When you're shooting in a real location, you don't always have the option to tear a wall down for camera placement. Many of the shots in that space just aren't feasible. In any case, they weren't frequent enough to distract me, and the few times they were used, I felt that they were used to show off the space so damn well. So overall, would I recommend this movie? The Favorite has supplanted The Lobster as my favorite Yorgos Lanthimos film. It is gorgeous, funny, dark, beautifully shot, and brilliantly executed. There is true craftsmanship behind this film. I can safely say, out of all his films, I like this one, the Yorgos Lanthimos. See what I did there? But do you see what I did there? I, I made a joke, it was a pun, it was a pun about his name. It was clever. It was a clever pun. Thank you. Now, if you excuse me, my chambermaid is bringing me something called a pineapple. Oh. Mm. Oh, this is. Yeah, this is nice. She's fucking fantastic. Oh my god, I have an idea. I know exactly what to do with this. Look at that. I put that shit on pizza. I don't even care if this is like completely uh, anachronistic. It's it's just good. You don't like it? You don't like putting pineapple on pizza? Fucking come at me, bro! It's where the shit belongs. I've completely abandoned the character of being some kind of Victorian something or other. But whatever, you're still watching the show. It's your own fucking fault. It's been another episode of another damn review show. I don't even know why I fucking make these anymore. Just, just roll the thing. God damn it, I hate everyone so much.